I think in sport it's it's instant success. So especially football, you know, in a business, businesses usually look for long-term success. So they look for little steps to, to long-term goals. In a football club, the manager may be wanting to get the foundations of the football club really strong and solid, yet if he loses five, six games, he could be sacked. So the intensity of the pressure is far greater than in the business world because you haven't got time. It's instant success. You need victories day in, day out, all the time. So the pressure of that gets pushed across to the players. So I think the players maybe start to play with a little less freedom um, because they know the manager's under pressure. So now the players are under pressure. We have to win. We must win or we get relegated. If we get relegated, we lose millions of pounds. So I think that the pressure gets passed down from the chairman and the owner to the manager to the players uh, without maybe the mechanisms and the resources of how to cope with it. Because as a team, you can cope with it. But how does the individual, when he actually leaves the football stadium on a football pitch, that things aren't going so well, how does he cope with it? How does he deal with stress? How does he go away and then come back the next day ready to perform again? And I think to stay in peak state and peak performance, you have to have strategies to let that performance go and pick up the next one and start again. Because one game can turn into two bad games to three bad games. And how many times do you see it where a centre forward now hasn't scored for 10 games? But before that, he was a superhero. He's, yeah. he's not changed, his ability has not changed. But something in here isn't the same. Confidence, whatever it is, self-belief, he's doubting himself, he's reading the media, he's starting to let these negative thoughts get in his mind. So he's been able to understand and I think look at things in perspective of that game's gone and now I'm going to do this. And that's very challenging to do, but once you can do that, you like the best of the best. They can just play not great one day, next day they're there again. And how many times do you hear the best players in the world getting criticised or doubted the next game they're a hero again yeah. because they've got that self-confidence that, that I am the greatest and they believe it. So I think self-belief is the most powerful tool that any person in the world could ever have. To have self-belief even at times of not things aren't going so well, it's very still good. believe in yeah. yourself in life, not just sport. And I think the best players in the world that I ever saw or was fortunate to, to even come across, they just had that inner belief that no matter what, they would be the best, they were the best. And I think that's what separates and that resilience, that toughness that it's not going well, I'm going to turn it around and take an ownership of it. Uh, rather than blaming and making excuses for whatever it was. Yeah, definitely. And also the resilience part is very, very important. Mm -hmm. I read a couple of articles by psychotherapists and psychologists uh, working in uh, Arsenal, actually. Mm -hmm. I don't know the name of the guy, but he yeah. worked uh, 30 years in Arsenal. And uh, resilience mm -hmm. is really, really important for uh, mm -hmm. football players. The ability to bounce back from uh, difficult uh, times when results are not good mm. when people are injured and yeah. so on and uh, so forth. It's a, it's, a, it's a skill and it's something that you don't train for until it happens and then when it happens you don't know how to do deal with it. So uh, for my own example is I had a really fantastic young career. So I played for England, you know, I was uh, playing at Wembley at schoolboys up to under 18s uh, and everything was going fantastic. However, I wasn't prepared for the time when things wasn't. I wasn't prepared for the moment that you're told, you're not needed here anymore. It's like, yeah, I've never been there. I didn't know how to cope with that moment. So how does a football player that hasn't had setbacks, then is given a setback, whether it's an injury or it's getting released from a football club, or it's actually someone's better than you now. How do they cope with that? Because they've not trained for it. So you physically train to play football and be fit. You, you're excited about the game, you love the game, and all of a sudden, something goes wrong, and you're met with, what do I do? Mm. You're not trained for it, you don't know how to cope. And I think that's where the real stress kicks in, that you feel vulnerable and you feel weak, and you, you're not sure what to do at that moment. So I believe if you can develop resilience before the moment happens, so a lot of young sports people I work with now is I always say to them, and what happens when this meets you? So a young football player wants to become the best. Okay, what happens if this happens? 
how do you cope with that? Because it's important as a young sportsman, we know there's going to be barriers, we know there's going to be obstacles to overcome. If you prepare for it before it happens, you can deal with it. If you come up to a barrier or an obstacle and you haven't got a strategy to get over it, round it or through it, that can finish it. So I love, I love to work with sports people, okay, what happens when you get to that moment when the manager may say, you're not playing tonight, I'm going to play somebody else. Rather than you spitting your dummy out and you know you then sulk for three weeks, how do you then react and prove that's him great. wrong? That's how do you get over it? And, and know it's going to happen because it is going to happen. So be ready for it when it does. Anybody in life that's got a goal, we all need to know what obstacles may be in our way so we're prepared for them before they actually come. So whether it's a businessman or a sportsman, a guy that's got a business that wants to become a multimillionaire, he knows there's going to be obstacles. But if you wait till the obstacles come and you haven't got a strategy to get over them, that can be the game over. So it's, it's being aware of them and, and accepting that there will be them and that's part of the process, that's part of the journey and you'll overcome them.